What's up, shelf addicts? Welcome back to the Shelf Addiction Podcast. Today on Book Chat, we are talking about The Vampire Academy, written by Rochelle Mead and its Peacock TV adaptation. Stay tuned. Hey everyone, I am your host Tamara and welcome back to the podcast. If you're new here, we're going to feature shelf addiction with fun book conversations, bookish topics, and more. It's like listening in on your favorite book club. Participate in this discussion by joining the Facebook group Shelf Addiction Official or over on the book club app. I hope to hear your thoughts on today's show. You can also find me and Casey on Twitter and Instagram. The links for everything I've mentioned are below in the show notes. If you enjoyed today's episode, please support the podcast by sharing it with some book nerd friends or on your favorite social media space. And don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe before you leave. That will really help me out and I appreciate you for doing it. The uncut video version of this podcast is available right now over on Patreon. Join us there for exclusive videos, including after shows and more. So if you're interested in that at all, you'll need to come over onto Patreon and sign up. As always with book chats, we talk spoilers here, so you've been warned. Without further ado, let's begin. Today, we are going to be talking about a book to movie adaptation. And of course, joining me is show co-host Casey from Heartful of Ink. Welcome back, Casey. Hello, hello. I'm so excited to be here. We did a lot of these previously, mm-hmm. but it's been a while it's, since we've done It's been a one. hot minute. Yeah. Yeah. It's time. It's, it's time. spooky <laughs> season. It's vamp season. Mm. And so we are going to do The Vampire Academy. Yes, by Rochelle Mead. Yes, I'm very excited for it. So as we do, we're going to give you the book stats. We're going to talk about the book a little bit, and then we're going to jump right into talking about the TV show. We might even blend things together. As we do. As we do. (laughs) So we're just going to wing it and just enjoy, okay? All right. So today, again, we are talking about the Vampire Academy, book one in series, written by Rochelle Mead. It was published April 16th, 2007 by Razor Bill and Listening Library. <laughs> the paperback is 332 pages and the audiobook is eight hours and 54 minutes, narrated by Stephanie Wolf. Casey, would you please read the synopsis? Love and loyalty run deeper than blood. St. Vladimir's Academy isn't just any boarding school. It's a hidden place where vampires are educated in the ways of magic and half-human teens trained to protect them. Rose Hathaway is a damn fear, a bodyguard for her best friend, Lissa, a Morai vampire princess. They've been on the run, but now they're being dragged back to St. Vladimir's, the very place where they're most in danger. Rose and Lissa become enmeshed in a forbidden romance, the Academy's ruthless social scene, and unspeakable nighttime rituals. But they must be careful lest the Stradorgi, the world's... Stradoy. Stradoy. Sorry. (laughs) Stradoy. I just listened to the audio. (laughs) The Stradoy. The world's fiercest and most dangerous vampires make Lissa one of them forever. All right. I'm not sure that's how I would describe the book myself, but... (laughs) I would not. I would not describe it exactly that way. So as we do, when you first shut the book high level, what do you think? I was surprised I liked it as much as I did. I didn't love it, but I kind of, you told me I was probably going to hate it. And so I kind of expected to not, to be more annoyed with it. Mm -hmm. But we just spent the last three months reading a very terrible character. And I kept comparing Rose to Faith, and Mm -hmm. Rose was always better than Faith. No matter what Mm -hmm. stupid thing Rose did, it was a lot better than anything Faith ever did. And so because (laughs) of that, I was never as annoyed with Rose because I was like, okay, you know, you have some character growth happening within book one. Faith never grew in three books. So I'm here for you, Rose. Like, (laughs) you're growing. You got this, girl. You're making dumb choices, but (laughs) you're owning it. (laughs) Yeah. So this is the biggest question. Mm -hmm. Did you like it enough to read another book or not enough to read another book? I don't know. I'm kind of tempted to read another book, but I'm not, like, jumping for the next book. Mm Mm-hmm. If somebody handed me the second book, I might, you know, start reading it. But I Mm -hmm. don't think I would, like, go to Barnes & Noble today and go buy it myself. Okay. 
at first, now see, you know how something is like high insight. You know, mm-hmm. you love something when you first read it, and then you're like, well, there's something, there's something. Mm-hmm. And so this time around, I read it one time. You guys, back in 2011 is when I first read this. So I enjoyed it. But then the issues I had at the end, I'm like, "Mm, there are a couple things I forgot that I didn't like. And ironically, I went to Goodreads (laughs) and I had a pretty lengthy review there. Mm -hmm. And the first time I only gave the first book three out of five. I mean, that's I did not sitting. Like I, I did not love the first book. But then I went through my other ratings. And book two got four, book three got four, book four got four, and book five got four, and book six got five. Wow. So I clearly wanted to know more, more so I kept mm-hmm. reading, and I enjoyed the ride, I remember. Yeah. But it, was, it wasn't it was the most solid start, and I still would agree with that. Yes. <laughs> so I think if I were to try to read more... I think I would enjoy it. I do. Mm-hmm. Because I felt similarly. <laughs> the first how I did time then. around. And when I read my review, I said, those are the same problems I have. Mm-hmm. So that's great. <laughs> <laughs> like, I didn't find anything more. That's good. <laughs> Just, no, that is good. Right. Yeah. So what are some of these issues? Okay. So the nicest way I can say it is I did not really like the vibe between Rose and Lissa at the beginning. Mm-hmm. It felt kind of maybe more than friends, but I'm not sure. Like it, it felt weird. It felt uncomfortable. A Queer little baiting. bit. Yes. Like yes. even that blurb that I just read, they're in a relationship. It made it sound like it was the two of them in a relationship. And it does. Mm-hmm. There are those moments where it feels like it's the two of them almost going into that relationship and it's it was weird and i didn't like that and yeah they can be friends they can be gay just pick one and stick with it exactly and it's very clear that both of these women are straight very 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 clear too straight so to even put that in there i was Mm -hmm. like "Mm, mm." yeah (laughs) yes So that was one. And another thing I kind of had a problem with was Lissa letting Rose drink from her. And that was a part, I think, of the queer braiding braiding stuff. Is Lissa drinking from Rose? Yes, the other way around. Because, you know, it kind of felt sensual when it was very sexy, sensual. And Rose was like, hi, and wanting. You know, to get naked almost. Yeah, no, it was very weirdly sexual. And that is something that is the very first thing that I was very happy that the show removed. Yes. They removed that all together. Yes. I'm like, thank God. (laughs) (laughs) Because don't confuse the issue, right? Mm -hmm. We don't, I feel like in the book, the author just wanted more conflict. And of course... In the book, Rose got had a big problem as a result of liking how it felt to have blood drink from her. So not that even caused just a liking problem. it, the fact that it happened, and then everybody started to spread those rumors, and you know they had to be like, "Oh my God, she's a blood whore!" And yeah, though it was just there for conflict, which was stupid. Yeah, and she did like it though because mm-hmm. that I think that is what got her in problems with that boy because mm-hmm. when he kind of threw it out there she didn't smack it down like hell no nah, that's awful you know <laughs> she was like well and he's like oh, you did it you did it and he called her out and mm-hmm. she didn't like react in the way she should have to prevent mm-hmm. him from like, making assumptions yes which turned into the clusterfuck of the century yes so <laughs> <laughs> but thankfully we don't have to deal with that in the show because yes thank god just- And I also, so my last problem, my last notable problem with the book, which the show also corrected, was in the book, Dimitri was six or seven years older than Rose. Mm -hmm. But Rose was younger. She was still in high school. Um, They're 17, right? In the book? I think. I know they're like I know. seniors, but they're still, yeah, they're teenagers and he's seven years older. Yes. Which I don't have a problem with that age gap in general, 
It's just that when you're in high school, and he says it to her in the book, when you're in high school and I have an adult experience, it's a big gap when you're that young. Yes. But that gap shrinks as you age, right? Yes. So in the TV show, so I, I, I had a problem with that relationship, even though I eventually thought it was super cute and rooted for them. I really mm-hmm. did. But in the TV show, they eliminated that because they are not in high school. Like they're treating the academy a little differently. So mm-hmm. they're not going to classes. They're not, they're drinking age. They're drinking publicly. Mm-hmm. So they're at least 21 years old. It's more like a college environment, more than a high school environment. We yes. never see them in classes, right? We never. Well, we do see uh, Alyssa and her people in classes like there was an actual kind of class it's seen for one moment but yeah for the most part it's very adulty almost like they're trying to be like this is university not high school yes yes but yeah rose and and everybody's training like it's but then there's the whole political thing where they're like we have to lower the guardian age to 16 because we want more teenagers and novices out there fighting like that. That was an inconsistency in the show that I can dive into later, but you're right. They were treating everybody like adults instead of children in the school, but politically they're still children. It was weird. Uh, Well, yeah, we could talk about that because, you know, also Alyssa in the show, she's like, Oh, you're up next. Batter up your turn you're gonna be you know the next in line for your family until something goes left but it's like immediately she's like thrown into that and she's picked you know she's Mm -hmm. selected by the queen or whatever Mm -hmm. so it feels different it comes across a little different definitely they age them up and i don't mind that at all Mm -mm. so so what about you did you have any things that stood out to you as things you didn't really like or um it was very i don't want to say like campy ya but it was so ya and like in the book it was so we're going to class we're gonna start rumors we're gonna almost have sex with boys and then start rumors and oh no she slept with the boy to spread another rumor and it was just Oh, like, do we have to? Um, that was probably my biggest nitpicky, although I agreed with everything you said. That was all really annoying. Um, mm-hmm. But the other thing was in the book, Dimitri has like no personality or presence or depth or anything. He's just this hot brooding boy who's making her run laps and mm-hmm. like what else is there but she's so in lust with him because he's so pretty and i was like i don't know who he is as a person we know a couple details about him but you know he's just the hot brooding boy so of course he has to be the hero he has to be the one we all want and love because he stands in the shadows right and yeah, I think we don't get to know him at that level until second book, really. And I think the show did another course correction by involving them pretty quickly. Yes. Yes, I yeah. really liked that we got to know him a lot more in the show. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, no, that was that was one of my issues. All of the mm-hmm. Stupid rumors, the sleeping around, Dimitri's just so perfect, and just why? Yeah, I get it. I get it. So they're not that, I guess, what's the word I'm looking for? You don't want to love them as a couple immediately, that's for sure. I don't even know if I, like, want them to be a couple. Like you said, he was like, I can't do this because I'm so much older than you, and it's wrong, and if you were older, then maybe it could be something, but right now, like, the age difference is too much, and I really appreciate when a male character says that, like, so many men just want to take advantage of younger girls, and he's like, nope, nope, I'm too steadfast in my honor to take advantage of a minor, so I appreciated mm-hmm. that from him, but otherwise, mm-hmm. I was like, 
who are you? Just yeah. like, who are you? Well, to me, he's like this brooding, like you said, hot Russian guy, right? Yeah. Um, and that's basically it. And they kind of took a little bit of that away in the show because first off, the guy's accent in the show, I don't know what kind of accent that is, but it's not Russian. It's not Russian. It's some kind of hodgepodge. I don't know what kind of, I don't know. And to be real honest, I visualized Dimitri a lot hotter than that. That oh, guy's not cute. Like that. that is not cute <laughs> at all. That guy's and not that cute at all. not working and I'm just like, no, nope, no. Nope. Nope. And I feel like if you want to change things i'm okay with change right in Mm -hmm. adaptation but go all in right Mm -hmm. if you're gonna change him to british make him full-on fucking british Mm -hmm. okay whatever that whatever you want him to be just dive in and own it right but at the very least make sure he's hot make sure he's hot (laughs) that is the whole like point thing (laughs) right you can't be average looking i don't know i (laughs) <laughs> that's just kind of how i feel about dimitri's character he need to be hot he we like with the vampire uh diaries right mm-hmm. everyone loved damon everyone loves Stefan. why because they like looking at him mm-hmm. they root for elena in these two one what your team a or b mm-hmm. because you think they're cute as a couple or you like them as a couple but rose and dimitri don't have that right now i'm like yeah y'all okay no yeah. okay I mean, there's some chemistry between the actors, but like even that's weak. I think, um, like a couple of the kissing scenes they had, I'm like, they were so extra in trying to create uh, tension mm-hmm. before the kiss, and I'm like, man, this kiss is taking a long time. <laughs> Just smash your lips together already. It seemed like that a lot of the time. They had like this. They were trying to create that magnetism where people don't want to kiss but they do want to kiss but i kind of think they failed and it just looked cheesy yeah i mean so much of this show is just so cheesy anyway <laughs> yeah and it sorry, is sorry not sorry yeah it is what it is especially the beginning it's like that first episode i'm like what the <laughs> what is this <laughs> they changed everything for this show and i'm not mad about it because like they wanted to make it a very long tv show and obviously this storyline in the book itself is so short like it was fully wrapped up in less than 300 pages and nice and easy and you can't drag that out for more than two hours like mm-hmm. no yeah um so i'm not mad about the changes some of them were annoying and i rolled my eyes a lot but like eh, it is what it is. Yeah, and some, like you said, were strictly by design to lengthen the story, right? Mm -hmm. Like, for example, you know, in the book, it was Miss Cart that had the spirit. And she went crazy and ended up Mm -hmm. killing herself. No, she was killed by um, the her lover, right? Or was it the other guy? He was one of the guardians. One of the guardians came and killed her. And I think it might have been her lover. Just you know, the more same tension. lover that Sonia had in the TV show because Mrs. Carp is essentially Sonia in the TV show. Yeah, it's for her being a teacher, she's much younger, and you know, Victor is her father. Mm-hmm. Also, another change. So instead of Lissa being forced to heal Victor, mm-hmm. Sonia is voluntarily healing him. Mm-hmm. You know, so they really took that whole weird thing out of it. <laughs> Which, again, was kind of shocking to me because I was like, wait, isn't he supposed, like, the very first episode, he's being all nice. I was like, wait a second, he's supposed to be the bad guy. (laughs) And Mm -hmm. nope, nope, they turned left really hard. Yeah, he's not a bad guy at all. He doesn't even want Sonya to do as much as she does. Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, how long before they switch him? And he's, like, desperate to to be healthy all the time. So maybe that might change later, but they're letting it lie in season one, clearly. Uh, did you get to episode seven? Because some shit goes down. Yeah, let me see. What happened in episode seven? I just watched it like an hour ago, so it's very fresh on I my mind. I watched it a couple days ago. Um, the queen wouldn't nominate anybody 
and his health is still deteriorating and he went to go find his daughter, but she killed somebody. Spoiler That's alert. Right. Sorry. She, yeah. She, <laughs> belated spoiler she, alert. <laughs> she did kill somebody because so, she, yeah, she did. So now he's getting more desperate. He's still super weak and needs healing. And his current healer has just turned super evil. So I think we might start leaning into the him kidnapping Lissa part. I'm just. Hmm. Not sure how they're going to play it. Well, I I don't know. So they also, another big change is they pulled Adrian into this book. Adrian does not appear in the, not Andre? in the book, into the show. Well, I guess Andre. His <laughs> name is Adrian in the books, okay? Oh, oh, and Adrian, oh. the, the, the spirit guy who drinks himself to death. Like he's constantly drinking oh, and high. No, no, no. Adrian. I'm thinking her brother, Andre. Adrian, the spirit guy. Yeah, okay. Right. So he doesn't appear in the books until book two. I was wondering if they had started pulling from future books, because some of it felt like too plot heavy. And I was like, this is not what I just read. So yeah, so Adrian is pulled ahead from book two. And also Adrian, if I remember correctly, now it's been a long time since I read these books. Mm -hmm. So if I remember correctly, Adrian actually dated Rose for a while. Hmm. Adrian dated Rose for a while before she actually got with. So it's not like book two. She just gets it in with Dimitri. That's not it at all. <laughs> Based on his reaction in book one, I wouldn't assume so. Yeah. I, I, he would pull back. He would not want to do any of this. And I trust his book instincts on this, I guess. Yeah, but I don't know if I like what the show is doing because in the show did have Adrian take note of Rose, right? He's, mm-hmm. He made some comment to her, right? Mm-hmm. So he likes the way she looks, but it seems like he is more flirting with Lissa. And not only that, but there were a list of options of people for Lissa in the in the show. Mm-hmm. And Adrian was on the bottom of that list as possible options to marry instead of. <laughs> Did you see the, who else was on that list though? Christian. Who else was Christian? Yes, Christian. And uh, Christian and her are not like what I thought they would be versus the book. The not book quite. version of them, I honestly adored. Like there were some issues, but I adored them. Mm -hmm. This version, I don't know. There's no spark. There's no chemistry. There's no Christian. He's more like a helper to her, like just a friend helper. And then they had sex and I was like, what? Why? Like, why? There's no, why? It didn't work. Not at all. It didn't work. But on on the page, they were super cute. They were so cute cute in the book. Yeah. And then this, I'm just like, no. No, it's not. You get all those scenes, right? Like in the book, they had time uh, alone alone together Mm -hmm. at the top of that, you know, in the church, Mm -hmm. that attic space. They they bonded. They shared more. Yeah, they got really emotional and bonded, and were you know together through thick and thin. I guess you could say, but yeah, in the in the uh, show, no, they're kind of like. I don't want to say sibling like, but you know, very just friendly, help burn. I don't know. They are friendly. Like he did in the show, he did help her during her trials. Like, and I don't even remember her having a trial in the book. Does she have a trial? In Not the book? in this book. No. Um. So she had to have her trial because I guess she was nominated for queen, and so they had to right. know what kind of magic she could do. Like all of that, just. It was brand new for me. I don't know if they do it in a later book or... I don't even remember her having a trial in the books. Honestly, that doesn't mean it's not there. (laughs) I just don't remember (laughs) it. Uh, And it started to feel kind of divergent-ish a little bit, some of this stuff. Like the whole fighting and scoring. Mm -hmm. That was divergent through and through. Mm -hmm. That was nowhere in this book, fighting and scoring. Um. Of course, show me your power type thing. Mm-hmm. That is not. <laughs> so they took elements from other another 
heavily from they pull from Divergent. Mm-hmm. I feel like mm-hmm. oh, um, for in sure. the show, they wanted to kind of. I felt like the showrunners wanted to throw back to our 2010 YA era of you know the Hunger Games, Divergent. Everything was so hot back then. The movies were amazing back then. Everybody loved it, and they wanted to try and recreate that here. Mm-hmm. I found it really annoying. Again, like I didn't care for it. Meh. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, they changed that, and of course, at the beginning of the book, Rose and Lissa are on the run. Mm-hmm. They're out and about on the run, and then of course they get dragged back. But in the show, they weren't on the run. They never left. They never left. And then they just went out for, you know, I guess Rosa to try to cheer her up. And they missed the curfew coming back. And then they got in all this trouble because they were like out of bounds after dark. And that was the trouble (laughs) instead of them being, you know, fugitives. Yes. Yes. On the run. (laughs) I don't know. I don't. The show changed so much. It's a completely different story. Completely different. Like you can't even think about the book watching this show because everything about it is different. Yeah. They've kept some tiny core pieces, but it's just not even working for them. No. Okay, this is a good time to take a break. I'm looking at our time. Let's take a quick commercial break. You guys, check out these commercials. Check out the book review notebook and journal available right now on Amazon. And come right back and we'll continue our conversation after this. Today's episode is brought to you by the Shelf Addiction Merch Store. Check out all the bookish t-shirts, notebooks, mugs, and more. Don't miss out on these original designs, perfect for any book nerd. Support the podcast and visit shelfaddiction.com forward slash merch and pick up your next favorite bookish item. Okay, welcome back, guys. Let's just pick up where we left off. So it seems to me... Mm -hmm. You like the book better than the show. Is that right? I would have to say yes. I do like the book better than the show. (laughs) Which is rare for me and very surprising. I Going into this, I thought it would be the opposite. I don't know if you remember our episode from earlier this year when we said, you know, here are the TV shows that are coming out and we're not going to read the books. This was on my list of, I don't want to read the book. I want to watch the show. Mm -hmm. But I'm really glad you made me read the book. Because I like the book better than the show. Yeah, I think I, while I agree with a lot of the changes they made with, because those were issues that I had, Mm -hmm. they also made a lot of changes that took away from the experience. So I still ultimately think the book is better. Yes. And it's rare to me. It happens once in a while, but it's unusual for me to like the adaptation better. Same. Yeah. Yeah. So, hmm. But I don't know. Like the objectively, I can say that this is a very decent TV show. You know, Mm -hmm. Um, if you've never read the book or if you like a lot of very political drama lots of angst, you know, you like the glitz and the glamour of all of their celebrity royal stuff, then you'll probably really enjoy the show. And, you know, I have to give them kudos for taking the story and developing it into something so detailed that can last eight, ten hours, however long a season's going to be. Like, kudos to them. They've done a decent job with it. I still have issues and there's still a lot of like plot holes and inconsistencies and just stupid characters being stupid. And I have to yell at the TV screen for that, but objectively like they did a good job. Yeah, I agree. But I would say if I wanted to continue reading the books, I would not continue watching the show right now because it's so different. Yeah. They just clash too much. And I would, Instead of enjoying the show, I'll be sitting there thinking about all the things that, did wrong. that aren't right. Yes. Uh, so I think 
if I want to continue the show, which I might, I might. I mean, it's not like on my high watch list, mm-hmm. but I threw so much of the season. I might as well finish the last three of the season. Mm-hmm. I kind of want to see how the season finale ends. Mm-hmm. Uh, but when season two runs around, if it comes around, I'll have to like make a cognizant effort to remember to watch the show. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's yes. not like it's, it's not yeah. there. It's not pushing you. It's not demanding to be watched. It's just, no. it's just there. And yeah, I feel like that's a good description of it. It's just there. It's there. Cause episode seven, I did fall asleep on and had to rewind. I don't know what I was doing, but I remember falling asleep <laughs> on it. I'm like, Oh no, I got to rewind. <laughs> I hate when that happens, but yeah, it's fine. Mm-hmm. It's fine. It definitely does not have, it's not okay. So, for example, it's not as bad as um, what is it called? City of Bones. They did that adaptation on Freeform. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's as bad as that one, <laughs> but th- it's definitely not the best adaptation I've ever seen. Did you watch Let's the movie version of Vampire Academy when it came out in like two thousand thirteen, fourteen, or whatever? I did, and I hated it. And mm-hmm. I mean, hate with an all caps. It was awful. It was so. Now, that is something that the show did well. They decided not to make it as campy. Mm-hmm. Like, that movie was straight on, like, what kind of BS is this? <laughs> it's, the, the tone was completely wrong. Everything was like che- over the top, cheesy, and campy. Mm-hmm. To me, I feel like the show is a lot more toned down. <laughs> I feel like all the fans I've ever talked to hate that movie. Anybody who's it's read awful. Vampire Academy hates that movie that was made mm-hmm. back then. And I feel like fans, you know, if they can put aside the differences, might enjoy this show a bit more. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, in that sense, and if good. they're more removed from mm-hmm. it, right? I think the further removed you are from reading the series, the more you'll be able to enjoy this because you won't remember every single thing like it just happened. Mm-hmm. So it'll be easy for I think it'll be easier for you to just embrace the changes because you won't really remember yes what happened where <laughs> when anyway yes. <laughs> so there's that. I definitely recommend having a nice long break before diving into the show if you've just read them. Yeah, absolutely. Because again, like even the very, very beginning opening of the show is um, Rose and Lissa and Lissa's family at this big party. Then they get in their limo and then you see the wreck happen. And that happened how many years prior? At least two or oh, three yeah, years a long time. before the start of Vampire Academy. And like instantly they're putting it right at the very beginning. They're making it so prominent to everything in this story. And so, yeah, if you can't handle that, like right off the bat, maybe give yourself some grace and wait a bit <laughs> before watching this. Yeah, it's very, very different. And that I, I don't hate it because like we mentioned like some of the stuff the the what you call it queer baiting queer baiting yeah i didn't really like that and for them to avoid all of it they just changed mm-hmm. it they said guess what they're not out in the world no one needs to to, to find bodies to drink off of if you're not out in mm-hmm. the world we just skip it all mm-hmm. let's just ignore it yes and that is exactly what they did <laughs> i'm also really glad they got rid of aaron he would not have added anything to the tv show plot line at all He's the guy mm-hmm. who Mia was dating and then Lissa stole him back and, you know, stupid high school drama in the book. Mm-hmm. He's just gone. And I really appreciate yeah. that. He's not important at all. Mm-hmm. Like, good riddance. I'm trying to think about the book. And really, I just kept comparing Rose to Faith in my head. And, like, every time Rose would do something, I'd be like, wow, you're being really stupid right now. But then Rose would come back and apologize. Like when she lied to Christian, she apologized to Christian later. And I was like, Faith would Mm -hmm. never have this much growth. Oh my God, go Rose, you're growing. I love it. And so it was just a lot of that for me. And that heavily influenced how I felt about the book. Yeah. 
I did like um some of the stuff Rose did was like very juvenile oh, of course. in the book. Oh, absolutely. But I still Rose as a juvenile is smarter than mm-hmm. <laughs> Faith as an adult. Yes, Rose is a teenager, <laughs> and I'm giving her that grace to be a teenager who fucks up, mm-hmm. but then she owns it and she does stuff mm-hmm. to apologize and she tries to fix her issues and she doesn't go crying to daddy the way Faith no. does every two seconds. And so, yeah, no, I just kept thinking about that. And I was like, Rose is an unlikable heroine, but she has growth. She has change. She's becoming a better person, like within this first book. And so that does give me hope for future books. And maybe I will go read them. I don't know. Like, it's it's not. You thought Rose was unlikable? I did, because she's not very mm-hmm. passive. She's very loud and brash and. She's unliked by most people. And so that's what I call an unlikable Mm -hmm. heroine is somebody who doesn't, you know, sit on the sidelines and wait for everybody to like her or, you Mm -hmm. know, Lissa was very passive. Lissa was like a very fragile doll in the book and she has more agency in the show, which I really like, but. Well, I uh, just as many as people who didn't like Rose in the book, she had people who liked her. Mm-hmm. Like Mason was hard. Like Mason. <laughs> oh God, the Mason thing. Yeah, yeah. He even in the show, Mason like goes hard for her. He's a little jealous, mm-hmm. but you know, she does have other friends that are also in in the program and stuff. So it's not like she's a complete no, outsider, no, no, no. and she only has Lissa. But but it, it's falls under that umbrella of unlikable because she's not conforming she's yelling she's speaking her mind she's kicking butt she's you know doing things on her terms and people are judging her and you know um she doesn't care what they think when they judge her and all that stuff but yeah she's one of the good unlikable heroines because I can root for her because she is showing growth because she's so much better than faith (laughs) Yeah, she is better She's so than much faith. better than Faith <laughs> in a lot of ways. <laughs> I mean, I I don't know. She's very mature for such a young person. Mm-hmm. You, you know, d- even putting out, you know, disregarding the little slip ups that p- high schoolers do because they're in high school. I mean, give her grace for that. Like she's in yeah. high school. I fucked up in high school, and yeah. you know, she owns it. She doesn't let it fester. She owns it, and I really admire that in a character Mm -hmm. yeah and i think like even at the beginning you know they thought we can do everything on our own we don't need anybody Mm -hmm. by the end of that book you know they basically especially rose she has let go of that idea of of doing it alone yeah yeah she -hmm. knows she needs the team she knows she needs dimitri as the second guardian she knows she needs to tell people that lissa has issues and so she goes for help it was really good. So what do you think about um, Spirit as a whole nother undiscovered, or not undiscovered, but kind of hidden, right? It's a hidden mm-hmm. long ago, what What do they call it? What do they call it? Skill or magic? What do they call them? Yeah, that not a lot of people have, but. I mean, it makes sense. Um, there's so many power hungry political people that if they knew this existed, they would do whatever they could to control it, to control everybody. So it makes sense that they kind of eliminated it. Um, I don't know. I'm interested to see where it goes, but I'm not really invested in the magic because even though the magic is so important, nobody really talks about the magic in this world. If that makes sense. Like I don't, we in the book christian sets somebody on fire and the tv show they have this big ceremony to show oh you have magic fire but then nobody ever really uses it for anything right and i know like why aren't you setting those your goy on fire when they're coming around trying to attack people just right like (laughs) that would make sense but no or blow them away if wind is your thing or like i don't know drown them (laughs) if water is your thing i just they could be using, that's the problem. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a part of the problem that the, the TV show definitely is pointing out. Like, you have these powerful vampires mm-hmm. 
supposedly. But the minute they come into contact with the, the, the red blood drinking, you know, the crazy killer vampires, the Shigoi, oh, they've lost everything. They don't know how to do anything. Mm-hmm. And they, rel- they rely on the Dampiers to totally take care of them and protect them. Mm-hmm. No matter what, this, this could be a Dampier that's 10 years old. Who gives a fuck? Get them out there. <laughs> they don't care. Exactly. <laughs> so all, all the bodies in front of us. But they could be so much more. And I think that's going to be another thing to wrestle with in the show, obviously. Mm-hmm. But I mean, they're just got to get there. They're definitely making it like the political campaign of the century. Yeah. And I don't know. I found the whole political stuff really boring. But, mm-hmm. you know, it is it is what it is. And so, yeah, no, I'm really glad that they're pointing out that these powerful people are actually very, very weak and not doing anything in the book. Yeah. yeah Christian attacked somebody and everybody was so shocked that he knew what attack spell. They're like, how, how did you know how to put fire like near him? And I was like, you guys have magic, but you can't, use it for anything they're not trained to use like so what's the point of it exactly like, <laughs> like you, you just light candles like what what do you do with I your magic i don't know and like in the book lissa was using um what is the word um mind control on people yeah she was using there was another specific yeah. word but I, it's not in my head right now uh but she was using it a lot <laughs> Yes. Every time you turn around, she is telling somebody <laughs> what to do. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> but in the show, it's like she even realized I I guess she never actually tried it, right? Mm-hmm. She never She she did it for the first time in the show. She was really yeah. in the show, she's learning about her magic, whereas in the book it's Rose who's like doing all this research for her and telling her what her life is which again made her feel very passive and like a fragile doll who couldn't do anything for herself, which is annoying, but. And Lissa feels a lot stronger in the show Mm -hmm. than in the book. Cause yes, like you said, she was very weak and she needed to be taken care of and protected and not so much in the show. Mm -hmm. Like, yes, she does need guards, right? Yes, but everybody does. She's royalty. Right. They all need the guards, but she doesn't seem as helpless and fragile exactly which was good she did in the book yeah it was very good definitely so i did expect someone just more fragile altogether fragile looking Mm -hmm. than the actress that they gave us for lissa so she is very opposite of what i would expect based on how the book describes lissa as being so frail and helpless and the one thing i absolutely love with this show is that everybody looks different because Mm -hmm. they went diverse. They're like, we're going to have lots of black people. We're going to have some brown people. We're not just going to make everybody white and blonde. And I think Dimitri is the only one who's, you know, the same as the book. But even then, like he doesn't really look or act or sound Russian. He doesn't look Norwegian at all. He doesn't look like anything of what I would have expected. Mm -mm. So, which is fine, but I feel like in for a penny, in for a pound. If you're going to do it, do yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, he was the only one like they tried so, to stick to the book yeah. for, but everybody else in the show is completely different. And I was like, thank goodness. And they did bring in some actual yeah. gay people. I'm like, yay, there's two husbands. And yay, these two girls are making out over here. Yay, diversity. <laughs> <laughs> and it it doesn't feel like they were just checking the box. Uh-uh. Like it actually fits the story. Mm-hmm. It makes sense. Mm-hmm. I believe it. Mm-hmm. It's not like, oh, they had to throw the gays in. Got it. <laughs> they got the blacks in. Got it. We got some Asians. Check the box. You know, it didn't feel like that. No, which so was really they, good. Like yeah. props to them. Kudos to them. Give them all the gold yeah. stars for that. Like that was really good. Because, yeah. yeah. And I agree. They did it right. If you're going to change it, change virtually everything. Mm-hmm. It's fine. Yes. Because these aren't things about these people that will stop them from acting like their character. No. It won't stop them at all. Not at all. From having these supernatural powers or, you know, in these situations, (laughs) they can be blue. Yes. And green. Yes. And they can still play those, be those roles. So I love it. Yes. Yes. We got to give them kudos for that. But. Oh, yeah. I don't know. The show just didn't quite hit it. Like all of the good stuff aside, the show just didn't quite 
hit the right notes for me. And I don't like, I, I can say a lot of good things about it, but just from a very personal TV watching standpoint, I could walk away from it today and never watch another episode and be fine. Mm, so you're not going to finish the season. You're not even curious. I'm, I'm a little curious, but I don't know. Like I, I don't think I could, I don't know. Like I'm not, I'm going to finish it. I'm not looking at the calendar to be like, when's the next episode? I'm like, okay, that was good. (laughs) I'm done. Okay. I will finish it, but it would, I have to be honest. It would surprise me if it got a second season. I hope for their sake, they get one. Like they're doing a good job with it, but yeah, like I, I don't know if it's doing well enough with ratings. I don't know if it's doing well enough anywhere else. I haven't heard other people talking about it. I, that's the thing. I haven't heard anyone talking about it, which is bad. Yeah, it is bad. So did you, okay, so this show is on Peacock. Did you have to pay for something or I have a, a trial, free trial for the next year with Comcast or whatever? Like, okay. But without that, I don't think you could have seen that show. At least in my experience with Peacock, you, they'll show you the first episode, mm-hmm. but you're not going to see anything the else. whole season. No. no. So on top of it being a unique and very niche show, you have to have Peacock and care about paying for that subscription to mm-hmm. watch it. And if I didn't already have access to it, I wouldn't have paid no. to watch beyond the first episode. So I don't know. I guess it depends, right? I don't. I haven't heard much about Peacock being very successful in general as a streaming service. I still think they're trying to figure out what they want to do. I know they're starting to get more popular movies to try and like attract people to their streaming service. Um, but yeah, no, I don't think they've really kept or canceled many shows. Like they haven't done much of anything. No, they definitely don't have any hard hitters. <laughs> Nothing that is dragging people. Like, for example, y'all know I, I love good, you know, good TV. Mm-hmm. So like Game of Thrones, is that toes the line for HBO a lot of the time mm-hmm. when it's in season, right? It does. They draw the watchers. And of course, like Amazon is trying to get some heavy hitters. They got this, they have the um, Lord of the Rings Uh stuff that they're trying to promote, grow. They're trying to grow their subscription from Lord of the Rings fans, Uh right? And of course, Disney, they toe the line with all their Marvel stuff. People will buy that subscription just for the Marvel stuff, even if they don't watch a single cartoon. Yes. Right. So that I think is what. Peacock is missing. There's nothing to toe the line for that subscription service. Mm-hmm. It's like a lot of random things, but there's no heavy hitter there. <laughs> and that is why Vampire Academy will not be seen by the masses because a lot of people, I don't think a lot of people have s- subscription service to I that. I don't not- think so either. And I, yeah. Again, I hope for the sake of the show and the creators and the actors that they get another season. Like, it's decent enough that I hope that for them. I probably won't ever watch it again. But, you know, like, kudos to them. Like, they know what they're doing. They know what they want. They have decent writing. I just... I just expected a little more, honestly, because Julie Peck's name was attached to it. Mm -hmm. And Julie Peck is the executive producer of The Vampire Diaries, The Originals. I um, never watched those shows, but it very much felt like that to me. It did. It doesn't. Oh, it does. Let me tell you okay. why. I felt like, to me, it felt like a lot more, especially early on in the season, a lot of splashy, beautiful, bright things, <laughs> you know, like... That it was from too just seeing the commercials gosh. of those shows. That's what I just expected from them. So it's like, okay, yeah, no, this is like Vampire Diaries. <laughs> Not even, I felt like the Vampire Diaries was a lot darker feeling to me. Ooh, it felt okay. heavier, darker. Uh, like for example, the main character, her whole fight in the first season is constantly re- being reminded about how her parents died when she was in the car with Ooh. them. So like her parents drove off of a. 
bridge and somehow she got out and she doesn't really remember how she got out, but they died. She didn't. So she has like survivor skill mm-hmm. on top of a brother who is acting a fool because of course he said about his parents dying. Mm-hmm. And so it's a lot, <laughs> <laughs> although they try to make that same thing happen with Lissa, Lissa to me doesn't feel like she's in the trenches of trying to deal with her family dying. It feels like she got over it pretty quickly. She did. She was a little depressed at the beginning, but then she, you know, was nominated to become queen and just forgot about her trauma. Her dead brother, Andre kind of appears to her a couple times, which is a little different again from the book. But other than that, no, she's very much over it. Yes, she's more concerned with her role of things and what has to be done Mm -hmm. than she is about grieving her parents. And of course, obviously, Originals was even darker than Vampire Diaries because no one is in high school. We're not doing the high school thing in the Originals. These are old ass, badass vampires and werewolves fighting each other (laughs) (laughs) for territory and other shit, right? So it's like that even has a more adult feel. Mm -hmm. With Julie Pleck, being attached to it i think i expected something that visually looked different than what i visually saw Mm -hmm. i felt like what i was looking at with vampire academy was a fucking circus and not (laughs) (laughs) yeah it was like look at it looked like a circus it was very bright it was very bedazzled and they're you know and that again opening scene in episode one where they're dancing around in the party and she has the red on her neck and then there's the red petals everywhere it was very much a glitzy glammy circus Mm -hmm. for sure yeah and everything feels like that even when like they're out there doing their little test they're in the woods and I'm like, I mean, that looks, it's like they're trying to make things cinematic, maybe? Is that the word? They maybe? were so dumb in that scene. When I tell you I screamed at my TV, oh mm-hmm. my God, I'm glad I live alone because they were so dumb. Mm-hmm. And I just cannot, there's so many times when these guardians are the stupidest motherfuckers ever. And I'm just like, <laughs> I know you're making them dumb to make a point so we can have trauma and drama and awful things happen. But, oh, my God, please give somebody a brain cell at some point. I mean, they're so highly trained, right? They're not. They weren't acting highly trained. They just walking around like a bunch of doofuses. No, they're like, (laughs) okay, there's a bad guy coming. One person, go get the other guy who's on guard duty. We're going to stand around this fire or sit down by the fire. I think some people are actually sitting by the fire. He comes stumbling back with blood everywhere. And they're like, oh, no. Oh, no. What's wrong? Oh, no. I don't know what's wrong. Oh, no. There's blood. Oh, no. And I'm just like, you stupid oh, motherfuckers. No. And then their friend shows up. And they're like, okay, some of you guys need to run to the car because apparently the car will save you. And I'm just like, you dumb motherfuckers. I cannot. No. Yeah. And then they forget about the original purpose. bad guy. They're just like, oh, we killed our friend. And I'm like, but where's the person who turned him? Aren't you worried about that? No, no you're going to sit here and cry. I thought about that too. Like, well, what happened to the person who turned this fool? Where are they mm-hmm. at? Like, you're not thinking about what else is out there. You're so concerned. That's why y'all are going to die. Yes. yes, that's why they're all going <laughs> to die because they're so dumb. Yes. Which is the irony of it all because they're supposed to be so well trained, so this, so mm-hmm. that. And then, of course, the royals are like, oh, well, I guess that just shows how ill prepared they are. Look at them all out there dying. Oh, well. Oh, I guess well. we need more. Get rid of the old ones and get some new ones, some fresh ones to train. I don't know. It's like, what? Yeah, no. The funniest <laughs> line of all time was when they told the queen that they needed more guardians. And she's like, yeah, so start telling them to fuck. This 90-year-old or 80, like this old Asian lady who's the queen. It's like, yeah, just tell them to go fuck. I was like, get, tell them to get to it and start procreating, I guess. I Oh my God. <laughs> that that line was iconic. That line will live with me forever. Just go tell yeah, that was pretty extreme. I'm like, the fuck <laughs> did she say? <laughs> Oh, like that yes, huh? yes, okay yes. got she's, it she's telling them what to do and she's on it 
That is that so was, freaking that hilarious. Was the best, but yeah. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Well, I don't have anything else I want to point. I feel like I pointed out all the things that were important to me. What about you? Yeah, I think so. It was, the book was better. <laughs> barely. Um, I may, I don't know. It was, it was good. I'm glad I read okay. it. I'm glad I watched it. So did you not say, I know I said yeah. my rating was three out of five. Is that where your rating falls yes. or, or less? I think. Okay. Yeah. Like it's a solid three stars. I'm intrigued. I might read more, but three out of five stars. Okay. And for the show, what would you rate that? Probably the same. Three out of five. Like, yeah. Like same, but for different reasons. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Like it's, it's good. It has some good qualities. I don't think I'll ever go back and finish it, but. Like, I have to give props and kudos and that Queen's line. Like, I just, <laughs> that had me laughing so hard. <laughs> that was kind of funny. I mean, she probably had the best line of the season. Oh, definitely. Like, that. that is the highlight. Yes. Okay, y'all. So, please let us know if you have read these books and or have watched the adaptation on Peacock. Let us know what you thought about it. You know where to find us. You can find us in Shelf Addiction Official over on Facebook. You can find us in the Book Club's app or come on the Discord server and talk about this show in the little feed section (laughs) just for TV. Yes. We can talk about it there. I want to hear your opinion. Did you like it more than the book? Less than the book? Same issues that we had or different issues? Tell me all the things. All the things. Okay, so I think we're done today. What do you think? I think we're done for today. Thanks for being here. If you're still listening to the sound of my voice, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button before you go. And we'll catch you guys next time. Until then, happy reading. Take care, guys. Bye, everybody. If you enjoyed today's episode and would like to show your support, there are a few things you can do. Head on over to Apple Podcasts and leave a positive five-star review or like this episode on your favorite podcast player. It seems so simple, but it really helps me out. You can share this podcast with other book nerd friends or on your favorite social media space. You can also join the Shelf Addiction Patreon family. For as little as $2 a month, you will help us produce even more awesome content for your ears. You can also consider joining the Shelf Addiction official Facebook group where we talk all things bookish and more in a safe space. The Shelf Addiction podcast is a part of the Nerdy Maven Network. You can also reach us via email at info at shelfaddiction.com. Thank you for listening.